and, and I, I spoke this week, and I've spoken about this before, but I think that it's really, really important, and it's, it's, it's a miracle that we're all standing here tonight all together and speaking to you. You should just know that, because I am so frustrated and so angry and so in pain um, of what happened this week to a girl that you're lucky I'm not, it didn't come in here it's just throwing chairs across the room because, because no matter how many times I will stand in front of this camera and stand in front of you women and tell you stay off the internet stay off the internet stay off Facebook it's just not good for you so at 7 o'clock on Monday night I got a call from a hysterical mother that her daughter who's 19 years old is missing for a week and actually I got that call on Friday and I sort of tricked the people that were that kidnapped this girl and, and got this girl um, I sort of tricked them and we Nobody, no matter how many times her mother, her mother came home, and um, last week, Monday, she came home, and all this girl's clothing were gone, and or her ID was gone, and everything was gone, and there was a note that was written that I ran off with some non-Jewish Spanish guy, and I fell in love with him, and the mother knew right away that her daughter didn't write it, because her daughter has a learning disability and can't write, but the guys who took her didn't know that, so they wrote this letter, and signed her name but we knew that that letter wasn't true and um, but she took her clothing and she's 19 so it's not a, it's not a minor and um, nobody could reach her nobody could find her Friday I told the mother that being that I deal with this she should text her that um, we're gonna file a missing persons report and I knew that the people were holding her when they see that they're gonna be scared that the cops are gonna get involved so she did answer her phone and she told her mother she's gonna meet her on Monday in Manhattan at 6:15 at a certain place and we backed up the mother to see if the girl would show up. Of course, the girl did not show up. And um, continued to call and could not find her. To make a long story short, um, we finally did get through. She was talking totally incoherent. And there's a regular, normal girl like anybody in this room. 19-year-old, regular Jewish girl living in Flatbush. And uh, sort of kidnapped. And still could not find her. And we finally got through on the phone, and she said, they're listening, they took my ID, they're erasing my ID. This is stuff that happens, ladies. This is what happens when you connect to people on the internet. They could, they could kidnap you, they'll drug you, you won't, they'll, they'll use mind-altering drugs, you will not know who you are anymore. They will change your ID, and you will be sold, and you will be traded, and you will be out of America, and you will, no one will ever find you. And this happens every single day. Yeah. And now they're after the Jewish kids, and there's nothing we can do, because if you're 19, then it's consensual. And we can't prove that anybody drugged you, because they could say you drugged yourself. We can't prove that, anybody, that you, anyone did anything physically to you, because they could say it was consensual. So anybody who's over 18, 19, and that's who they target, specifically, because they can do whatever they want to you, and then say, she's 19, it was consensual. So, so we got her on the phone, and I didn't know what to do because she told me to get there listening, and she didn't know what she was talking about. And Hashem sent me a crazy machshava, and I said to her, I said to her, knowing that they were listening, I'm in your house, and I have your heart medicine. She doesn't have a heart medicine, and I have your heart medicine, and you're a week without your heart medicine, and you have arrhythmia, and a week without heart medicine for arrhythmia. Don't ask me where that came from. Um, you're, you're not going to make it till tomorrow morning. I mean, you're going to have a heart attack tonight. I, what are you doing? Just, just tell me where you are. I'll put the, med the, the pills into an envelope with two hundred dollars, and I'll, uh, and I'll, I'll leave it by the doorstep. Just tell me where you are. And all of a sudden, this guy gets on the phone. He says, "She has heart medicine. She takes pills." And I'm like, "Pills? You better blank believe it." If she don't get those pills, she's dead. She has arrhythmia. And they hung up the phone. And then we did what we have to do because you can track a phone. First you have to make a missing persons report. And as we're making the missing persons report, we're beginning to track a phone um, to find out where she is exactly. 
um, I get a, someone pick someone calls me back and says, "Hi, this is Officer So and So. Do you know anything about this girl? We just walked into an apartment. We got a phone call from uh, EMS that there's a girl who's having a heart attack. She doesn't have her medicine." <laughs> It's not funny. It's a nice, it's a nice, a nice nifla. So that I, Hashem put that into my head, and they panicked, thinking that they got themselves a girl here that's very sick and is going to die, and how they're going to explain it. So they wanted to be the good guys, and they called the MS and um, took her to the hospital. Except she's totally psychotic and um, recognizes nobody, and um, is pretty much not here anymore. And I spent seven o'clock till six o'clock in the morning with her with detectives and, and officers and there's really not much they can do because these guys called it in and said she ran away from home non-Jewish boyfriend Jewish people are trying to make up stories about us girls, Jewish girls do this all the time they make up stories and police are like she's psychotic we can't take anything whatever she says and so I am frustrated angry furious upset uh, traumatized because I've never looked into a pair of eyes and someone looked at me and then I, 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 they weren't looking at me they were dead eyes I never saw anything like that what these guys did to her I don't even want to think about and the most frustrating thing is that I cannot get up here enough times and tell you get off the freaking internet get out of the chat rooms and get off Facebook what are you doing? why are you talking to people that you don't know? too late for her I don't, I don't think that you know it's already now 48 hours and she's totally in a psychosis too late a regular Jewish 19 year old girl so I wasn't going to talk about it tonight but I'm thinking to myself I stayed up for 12 hours didn't sleep I came home at 6.15 a.m. why shouldn't I talk about it I don't want to do this again I'm tired I'm very very tired I don't want to do this again and that girl's my sister. And what these guys did to her shouldn't be done to, to the worst human being in this world. And the only reason it happens because she was on the internet. She met him on the internet. We know that. And these guys are pros. Her bank account was emptied out. All the money that was in it was emptied out. She's 19. She's the only one in the camera consensual, she's 19, she can take money out of her account they know exactly what they're doing they're professionals and you are not professionals you are vulnerable, amateur, Jewish people and you are out of your mind if you are on that internet talking to people that you don't know and I just cannot stress it enough and no matter how many times I talk about it it doesn't help. Doesn't help. I, I don't want to be in a hospital till six o'clock in the morning anymore. Especially at Elmhurst, Queens, where nobody speaks English in the whole hospital. So I decided about a minute and a half ago that I am going to talk about it because I really wasn't going to because I'm in that much pain and Ray Watson has seen pretty much everything in his life. I've never looked into a pair of eyes that there was no brain behind it. It's the first time I ever saw that in my life. I, re I really don't want to see it again. And you don't go out with guys that you don't know, and you don't trust anybody, anywhere, because we're living in a very sick world. And you don't trust the people that you think you can trust. Let them marry you. Okay? And then I hope you can trust them. You can't go out with guys. You can't do this stuff anymore. It's over. It's over. They just want to hurt you. People just want to hurt you today. You got to stick, stick with the people that you know. And on the internet, you don't know anybody. You know, in, I, I know a girl that was talking to a girl for three years. For three years, she was telling her all her problems on the internet. They were talking. And finally, the girl flew in that she was talking to a Borough Park girl. The girl flew in who she was talking to to meet her in a hotel. Finally. And she was so happy because she's been talking to this girl and telling her all her tsaras. Well, guess what? It wasn't a girl. 
And I'm not finishing that story. She thought she was talking to a girl. What are you doing? You're talking to someone on the internet and you don't know who it is. All right, got that off my chest. Anyway, no, it's going to happen anyway. I could talk till, till I'm blue in the face. Because, eh, Wallstein, eh, one story. Cops told me, <laughs> detectives told me, oh, Rabbi, a lot of your people, a lot of your people. He says, and we don't know which ones are telling us the truth because the religious ones, they're scared to say they went off with a boy. So they make up stories that they were kidnapped and someone put something in their drink. So we don't know which girl's stories are real any, or not real anymore. She says, so how do I know that this girl's story is true? And I'm like, Lieutenant, why don't you go into the room and meet her? She can't make up a story. She's not here. And he took one look at her and he was like, I'm sorry, Rabbi. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I said anything. So he knows other girls that are getting involved like this. This is crazy. This is totally out of control. What are you doing? I just don't want to see it again. I, I, I can't get past what I, just, or, what, what I just went through. I went through. Nebuchadnezzar. And, and the prognosis is whatever they did to get her. I don't know that she'll ever be back in this world. So, you know, sometimes they just don't give you another chance. They just shoot you up with some stuff to, to erase your memory, to erase your brain. There's a lot of that stuff out there. You, you can't go. There's no reason. You need the internet to do your college stuff. Just do your college stuff and turn it off. You need that work? Do your, do your work and turn it off. What are you talking to people? Stay off the internet. What I saw this week, I don't want to ever see again. And I have to tell you something. I'm not looking to cause shock, but it's one thing for Reverend Wallace to have walked into that hospital and seen this girl screaming and yelling totally out of control, things that made no sense because she was totally psychotic. But standing right next to me, who I brought to the hospital with her mother. And to look at her face the first time she saw her daughter in that state was something I never imagined that I could ever see. I am begging you from the deepness of my heart, get off the internet, get off Facebook. Please, there are people watching, they see your pictures that you post, even though you think they cannot. I know boys that I know, they're not dangerous, they won't hurt you. But they know how to break into every one of your Facebooks. And they see all your pictures, even though they're not your friends. It's a social network. Why are you posting those pictures? Your mother should never, ever walk into a hospital and see you because you were on that internet. She fainted. She could not, she was screaming, that's not my daughter, where's my daughter? It was her daughter, but she was screaming, that's not my daughter. I don't know how to stress this any more than I'm stressing it. Get off tonight. Use it for school, use it for business, use it for whatever you need to use it. Do not use it as a social network. Social network should be your Jewish friends that you know who they are. And if you're single, very preferably female. Not because I'm some crazy religious rabbi. Hashem created this to help you and defend you. This poor child went on the internet innocently. Really, innocently. I know who she is. She's been in this chair. She, you know who she is. She's been here with her mother. She's part of Ornava. She was part of Ornava. I don't know what she's part of right now, but she was part of Ornava. And I promise you she wasn't looking for trouble. Talking, nice, this, whatever, questions, answers. Help me, this, that. Brilliant guy. This guy's a brilliant guy. This is not some sleazy guy that you meet in the street that you run away from. This guy wears glasses, 
intelligent, college graduate. That's the game. They're perfect. They know exactly how to get you. They know exactly what to do. They know all the keywords. They know how, who's vulnerable. They know if you're over 18. Now they know already that the law is over 17. They know all the laws to, to, the, to, the, to the point where you said, the police can never do anything to me. She's not a minor. They know exactly what they're doing. You don't. They do. I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Get off tonight. Hushbalch <coughs> should bless us all that anytime we stretch our hand out to help someone else, it should keep stretching till it helps them. Mm -hmm. Have a good night.